All right, short video here. This is a Tesla Model S module, 6S, like 250 amp hours, right? 24 volts. Uh, and what I'm doing here is I'm testing it. I'm using my RC charger. This is a 1,344 watt RC charger. It's a big charger, but this is a five kilowatt hour battery pack. So it takes a long time to charge it and discharge it, especially when I'm using a little Lenovo uh, 230 watt power supply, right? 230 watts uh, at uh, 20 volts, it's about 10 amps. So it's gonna take a long time. 250 amp hours, right? Uh, well, you do the math. I can't do the math. I'm not smart enough to know that math, but it's a long time, a lot of hours. So I thought, man, I need a better power supply, a bigger one. 230 uh, watt is not good enough. How about, I mean, something that's closer to this, how about a thousand watts? Well, here we go. This is a 12 volt, a thousand watts. I mean, according to this anyways, a thousand watts output 83 amps max i probably won't be able to use at the full thousand watts of this right because of the voltage is going to be low but and i'll have to modify it because this is a uh, server power supply so we'll have to like do uh well you'll see we'll have to do some stuff here to connect it but let's let's change that and then see how much power we can get out of this at 12 volts and then I think I'm gonna order another one, a second one, so that I can run this at 24 volts. In fact, this unit here can work at, uh, can you read here? 32 volts, 32 volts. So, oh man, three of these are 36, might be too much. We'll try it. I think I might be able to run three of these guys to these 3000 watts. Uh, although this one's only good for 1300, right? So maybe two at 24 volts. Maybe we can get all full 1300 watts off of this uh, Let's do this According to the internet what you have to do is run one cable from here to there on the second pin On the bottom. This is bottom view and then from the third pin all the way to the positive side or this is the positive this is the negative and then we'll put uh, an XD 90 connector in there or something like that all right are you ready to test it yeah sounds like looks like you are okay here we go so pause uh negative negative and then the cable that goes across it and then the one that goes all the way right so in order to get these um you know the solder here you'll have to use like two soldering irons because this is a lot of copper and so a single one will not do it that's what i ended up doing okay once you do that then the next thing is to test it is to connect it look at that there's a green light which means that this is on let's check out the voltage here and see if we have power here i have my little thing the positives over here the negatives over there all right look at that 12.9 volts looks like uh, about 13 volts that's not bad let's hook it up to this um, to this charger and see how much we can squeeze out now all right so now I plugged it in there we go here's the charger I reset this charger and reprogrammed it to uh, for the parameters for 12 volts right and the minimum voltage that's allowed. Uh, I'm gonna attempt to charge 25 vo uh, amps into the pack. Remember, this is 20 volts, this is 12 volts, so this is gonna have to boost the voltage up, right? Let's we'll see how much it will do. Check in pack, okay, success, then charging. Okay, here we go. 12 volts to 20 volts. Gonna charge this guy. I, I, 
I did 25 amps just because these cables here are not super thick and because I don't have these are not really you know they're tight but it's not ideal there I think it's good enough for like 20 amps but it's just a test let's see there we go 5 amps 11 amps 17 amps 20 amps Ooh. totally hear that also you have to be careful this is grounded which is interesting because if I'm gonna do the 24 volt one I have to take that into consideration I need to protect it so that this case doesn't touch the next case and I have to like make sure all of this stuff is not exposed keep that in mind when you're using these there we go 25 amps into the battery we'll let that uh, do its thing for a little while and then we can check on it I mean 20 amps all right all right so that's been running on for a little while uh, the hottest I mean it's just warm but the hottest thing is this the connector here I, ha I don't know why I have this but I do uh, but I've pushed 40 amps through these cables so we'll see okay oh my god Ooh, look at that 31 amps uh let's look at 60 amps 60 amps on the power supply which uh according to this thing can do 82 max <laughs> the thing is going Sounds like it's gonna blow. Okay, let's see here. <laughs> that is crazy. So a correction, that's uh, only 640 watts, but oh my god, this thing is seriously... Wow, these cables are hot at 60 amps. Ah! <laughs> I just burned off the charger. <laughs> No! <laughs> well, that was the end of my charger. Oh, man. Well, <laughs> that's what happens when you try to run stuff too hot. Right, so after taking this thing apart, uh, it turns out that one of the MOSFETs uh, blew out, right? Uh, and I would looked online for the uh, schematic, and it turns out, I guess, no one has ever taken this thing apart. There's never, like, the company's never released it, so I couldn't really find it. So as a result of the thing blowing up, I couldn't read the number, right? So since I can't see the schematic now I'm thinking that because there are three of these MOSFETs next to each other then the likeliness of all of them being uh, exactly the same number is well it's high right so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other one one of the other ones apart and then see if I can read the number well that was turned out to be easier said than done because they have these like coding that does not allow you to read. And, you know, I tried, like, 
using some solvent to like wipe off that thing, but just nothing, nothing was working until I had the idea to burn it up and I used my uh, soldering iron to to place the, the thing there and it just like after a few minutes it burned all that nasty coating and the numbers slowly, slowly emerge. And there we go. Here, uh, I took, I ended up taking both of the good uh, transistors, right, the MOSFETs, to see if they were matching. Because then if both of them were matching, then the likeliness of the third one being, you know, uh, the same uh, part number, then it's high. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, I guess I get to order online, which also turned out to be a bit of a... Um, a challenge because it seems like uh maybe it's like an obsolete part like it's out of out of production or something digikey and mouser which are like the big electronic suppliers on in the in the usa don't carry this part this this mosfet so i had to order it on ebay from china so it's gonna take a few weeks to get here so I, until then, I guess my charger is broken. I will have to use the other one that I have there. And just like that, this is how you burn and ruin a $300 RC charger. Okay, uh, before I go, one last thing. Uh, according to the specs, this uh, MOSFET, uh, I think it's an M-channel MOSFET, right? It's rated at 60 amps and then there's like another version there's a variation that's like 120 or 160 amps or i believe that this one is probably the 60 amp version and because i was running the charger at 60 amps oh, 60 amps <laughs> that's why it blew right um it's less than a year since i bought that charger i probably could send it back to those guys and have it repair but, well, too late now. I took it apart, and uh, now it's up to me to find a component and then put it on there and see if it works. Hopefully it works. I will make an update video to this thing, and I will show you if it all works out or if it's a giant failure and I just, uh, if this is in way over my head and I shouldn't be doing it and stuff. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. Uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.